Medical students are used to working with cadavers, but rarely do they know the person who became that cadaver, let alone the family who had to part with their loved ones. These families sometimes have to wait for months before they can perform the last rites. But in the Silent Mentor program, the students first bond with their silent mentors when they visit the families and learn about the lives of their mentors. All this before they even begin their workshops at University Malaya. One of the aims of this program is to cultivate a sense of compassion in the students for their future patients. The participants take great care when they practice their skills on their mentors from beginning to end, treating them as if they were family members. At the end of the week, the students dress them up before laying them to rest in their coffins, complete with flowers, thank you cards and tears. Mr Lim, as medical students, we often learn from books and being able to learn from you is of our utmost gratitude and honour. Throughout our learning journey with you, what we have gained is far beyond science and skills. Instead, the greatest values that you have silently taught us, empathy, compassion, and humanity equip us in becoming a great doctor. We truly appreciate the privilege that you have granted us. The program was set up based on the silent mentor model initiated by Zuchi University in Taiwan to break the taboo of donating bodies and organs for medical research. Right now, it is still considered a taboo among cultures to bury or cremate the body weeks after the person has passed away. Program Director Professor Dr. Saw Ike hopes to change the public's perception of this noble program. It depends on our public perception and also our culture. Most of our culture, people would like to have a closure. When even the family members pass away, even, even they are very strong and the donor or the mentor, they themselves have very strong will to donate. But then when he, he or she pass away, the family members have to cope with the loss. And one of the ways of coping is actually a closure, whether I buy a ceremony or burial or something like that. So the program is open to all religions, but so far, Buddhists make up the biggest percentage of donors. There are about 1,100 pledges since the program started, but Professor Dr. Saw says not all of them will become mentors. In fact, sometimes it may not be possible because of the nature of the death. If let's say it's accident and all, you need post-mortem. So we need to be here within eight hours. So that is prerequisite. Yeah? For mentors to be joined and to be initiated, there are two requirements. One is a valid death certificate. That means cause of death is confirmed, the medical practitioner sign. No other problem they can bury. It's called death permit or burial permit. One. Number two is arrangement to arrive here in eight hours' time. So we can cover it until Penang, until Johor, but not from East Malaysia because of this eight-hour limit. He hopes that with more exposure, the public will be able to understand and accept someone's decision to donate their body to science. We, we hope that we can get to more other universities. And then I think with hopefully the increasing number of donors and all, we would be able to provide training for more students from all the universities 